His name is H.L. Greenberg. Says he had the coronavirus back in December. Uh, luckily, he's doing much better now, and we appreciate him taking the time to come on. Mr. Greenberg, thank you for being here. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. So my name is H.L. Greenberg. I'm a board-certified dermatologist. I uh, actually did an internal medicine residency before dermatology. Uh, in my senior year of that residency at Georgetown Hospital, I did a rotation in infectious disease for a month with Dr. Uh, Anthony Fauci. So uh, I'm very familiar with infectious disease and uh, viruses. And when I didn't feel well in December, uh, I, I wasn't sure what it was. I didn't feel well again in uh, January. And it was either in December or January that I think I uh, got the coronavirus. What were your symptoms? And uh, just tell us a little bit of what you had to go through there. Sure. So in December, it was just general malaise around Christmas time, and I was in bed and achy. Uh, in January, uh, and I coughed a little bit in December. In January, I went to a friend's. Uh, that she asked me to take her daughter to a daddy-daughter dance. I went there on January 17th. Uh, that was in Henderson, and that was a Friday. And on Sunday, I wasn't feeling well. On Monday, which was Martin Luther King Day, I certainly wasn't feeling well. And on Tuesday, I spent all day in bed, and for the next week or two, I was coughing. I had uh, fevers uh, during the weekend and uh, aches and pains. Did you, obviously in December, we were, and, and even in January, nobody knew exactly how, you know, the whole country was going to be shut down. But did you have any inkling, when was the first inkling that, entered your mind with your you know with your uh history uh and, and what you know that you said to yourself holy cow i might have the coronavirus when did that first hit you yeah um it, it, you know like everybody else maybe not everybody else i have a little brother and he and i have a lot of debate and we argue and uh I told sounds like our radio I show to, what's that <laughs> So this sounds like our radio show every day. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. so, you know, my brother likes to egg me on and give me a hard time. And I said, you know, I had symptoms in January where I was coughing. I wasn't feeling well. And because Vegas is an international city, I think we were exposed before whatever the common narrative and timeline is. And he says, that's impossible. The timeline is what the timeline is. And I said, no, it's not impossible because this is a moving target. Nobody knows what's going on. So I ended up having, uh, when the blood test came out uh, in uh, April. I was uh, one of the first people to get it done. I had my blood collected on April 23rd. And on April 24th, I found out that I was SARS-CoV antibody IgG positive, meaning that I have been exposed. I didn't die. I made uh, antibodies, and I am now immune to the virus. Wow, that's incredible. And by the way, we're glad that you're doing much better than you, you and your family are well. You mentioned to me that you spent time, obviously, with Dr. Fauci. There's a lot. I have to ask you about that because, you know, there are some yep. people that are attacking Dr. Fauci, many on the right. And I don't want to make this political, but they are attacking his credibility. I've defended sure. him he, while he's not perfect. And even he says he's not perfect and he makes mistakes. I think he's a smart man and a good man. What can you tell us? You've spent time around Dr. Fauci. What can you tell us about him? Uh, so I spent a month with him when I was in my senior year of Georgetown Hospital getting my internal medicine uh, degree, and uh, he was amazing. Everybody who was on that rotation wanted to present in a way uh, not to embarrass themselves and to impress Dr. Fauci. And, in fact, my father, when he was at Walter Reed Army Hospital, did his uh, senior year rotation with Dr. Fauci, who was his uh, – fellow in infectious disease at the time. So I told Dr. Fauci, you know, Dr. Fauci, my father uh, was, was your senior resident at a point in time when he rotated here. And he said, son, you're making me feel really old. Uh, he's funny. He's bright. And uh, I do think he has the best interest of medicine at heart. When you think about the that, that, that response team, right, obviously Dr. Fauci, Dr. Burks, Dr. Hahn, and the rest of them, what do you think about that whole dynamic, right, where you're trying to – you want to focus on science. You want to focus on facts, right? But you're also – you have that balancing act where you're dealing with the Trump administration, right? You're dealing with politics. That's got to be something, right, that Dr. Fauci and the rest of them uh, has, to, has to be tough to deal with, right? <laughs> I think, I think it's tough, you know, in this, in this charged environment to deal with anything. And, you know, my brother and I share different political views. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, none of these people are perfect, and they're all trying to do the best they can. But I can tell you that, you know, given my experience when I was with him, uh, and it was during the time of HIV-AIDS, so we had a ton of right. HIV patients. Uh, you know, it was all science-driven, fact-driven. But mm -hmm. in this case, facts are changing. So the fact that I am, you know, covid 19 positive with my antibodies mean that I was exposed and I don't have the disease according to a timeline that shouldn't be means that the timeline has changed things have changed 
Oh, so where exactly did you get your antibody test done through? And so let's say someone wanted to do the exact same thing as you. How would they go about doing that? Was it was it Quest Diagnostics or what? What was the what was the company? Yeah, so Quest is the one who offers the test. In my office, Las Vegas Dermatology, uh, I had my blood drawn by my staff, and we sent it. And we're doing it for our patients. Um, we have them fill out a questionnaire, uh, and and we do an office visit, discuss the implications of the test. And uh, we just completed a one-pager on, on the test. Uh, you know, I found out uh, that we could offer the test uh, basically April 21st. And I told my staff I was going to send out a newsletter, you know, after I became positive, but I didn't want to send that out without having a process and procedure in place to draw the blood and to get it out. This test is not a good test if you think you are actively infected or if you've been infected within the past three weeks because you wouldn't have had time to make the antibodies. So as a dermatologist, I'm sure you have a lot of connections to, to hospitals and, and other doctors throughout Las Vegas. What have you heard about the virus actually being in hospitals? I mean, were the hospitals at any point overrun with, with people who actually have the virus or that were overly symptomatic or that were on ventilators? I mean, do, do you think that, that the virus really doesn't exist a lot in these hospitals? And, and what are your thoughts on the overall reaction uh, you know, by the, by the governor keeping Las Vegas in, in lockdown during this time? Do you think that it's warranted based on what you know? Sure. So I'm uh, Las Vegas Dermatologist. Which is my practice is at Summerlin Hospital. So I have lunch at the hospital every, um, maybe every other day. But uh, I've met with the CEO of the hospital. And when I thought that it was possible that I could still have the virus uh, and be exposed, I asked him if I could have one of the ventilators, you know, set aside for me and he could get free dermatologic care for life. You know, I just wanted one with my name on it. And they have not been using the ventilator. So they have like 99 ventilators, and they may have been using 20 or so. But uh, those aren't necessarily COVID patients. These, you know, a ventilator is used for multiple reasons, and COVID is just one of them. I want to ask you, I want to go back to Dr. Fauci, because I find that fascinating. There's not a lot of people on the planet that have gotten a chance to, to learn from the doctor, to spend time around him. And even if you were only around him a month, uh, what do you what do you think to yourself when you see, for example, uh, you know Fox News, for example? There are a lot of shows on Fox News. They go after the doctor. There are a lot of sure. right wing talk show hosts that criticize the doctor. In fact, they're criticizing him. I know a lot of people. Well, he gave three point seven million dollars to the Wuhan lab. I know that's one theory where you know, and some people want to correlate the fact that maybe Fauci was a part of this, and other people want to say, well. Fauci knew the Clintons. He knew George Soros, you know. So, yeah, I know. I laugh at it, too, doctor, to be honest with you. I mean, you knew this guy. I mean, yeah. not extremely well, but you've spent time around this guy. Did he ever bring up politics in the discussion? Did he ever bring up how he used to hang out with the Clintons? What are your observations, and what, what goes through your mind when you see somebody on the right, like a Laura Ingram, constantly attack Dr. Fauci? I, I, I can tell you that when I spent time with him, I loved that man, and I thought he was just a model of the type of physician that I wanted to be. So I really enjoyed my time there uh, with him, and you know, I was in touch with the dean of uh, Georgetown's medical school on Twitter uh, asking where I could donate my plasma. Um, if he had any connections, and it turns out that we can donate plasma here in Nevada through UHC, uh, University Health Services, or UMC, that right, there's a, right. a program in place. But, uh, no, I've always been impressed with Dr. Fauci. When people attack him, I, I don't – you know, I, I think a lot of us have things that we're not proud of that we've done in the past, and I don't know what he's done or hasn't done. But when I worked with him, um, I thought he had a ton of integrity, and everybody around yeah. him – was just impressed, and he was held in the highest of regard. What would you do, doctor? And I know this isn't your forte, but let's just say hypothetically speaking, you're in that room where he's holding a press conference. You're Dr. Fauci or Dr. Burks, and the president looks at you and starts talking about the possibility of injecting disinfectants into your body. If you were put in that position, how would you react to that? Uh, what did you think of that whole spectacle? Um, I... I you know, I, I I probably would have laughed too because it's so ridiculous. Um, it's it's not. You know, the president had said, and at least because I've been watching that too, and I see you know all the political posts going around saying that now he's telling people to inject disinfectants and it's a bad idea. You know, he said he was joking. Other people say he wasn't joking. I think when you're in a position such as that of the president, you know, even when you're joking, it may not come across right. And you know, I certainly told jokes in the room with patients, uh, trying to lighten the mood and get them to feel more comfortable that have landed wrong. So I, I can't speak for him, but uh, I, I think all of us can agree that you don't inject a disinfectant into a person. 
Doctor, going back to what you discussed with JD regarding you know medical capabilities and medical facilities capabilities here in Las Vegas and across Nevada, I just kind of wanted to bounce this off you because we are lay people here as radio hosts. Sure. You are an actual physician. Uh, in, in your opinion, and uh, and as far as uh, your take, do you think that? Uh, there's people out there. There's people like JD who think we should be open now, and we should have opened, you know, a couple weeks ago or maybe weeks ago. But there's also a lot of people out there that believe that we should have never shut down in the first place. Is there evidence out there? Are there facts out there that would support their argument to do those two actions? Well, it, it, you, there, there's a couple points of view here. So up until maybe this week uh, or even this weekend, we didn't even know if you were exposed that you have antibodies. Now, I knew or antibodies that are protective and, and give you immunity. Right. Based on my training, I knew that if I have the disease, I don't die from it, I clear the disease, and, that then, and I live, then I have antibodies. Right. Science doesn't change just because your political narrative is a certain political narrative. I don't know what the mm -hmm. WHO is up to. I don't know what people with different agendas wanting to keep somebody like me who's had the disease, who I feel like I should have an immunity passport that I could wear on my chest and walk around without a mask. Now, I'm not going to do that because people don't understand. It. I'm not going to you know, disrespect others. And you know, people are scared. I even had a patient say that he thinks that I gave him the virus two days ago, uh, even though I wear the mask and I don't have the ability to give it since I'm already immune. Right. Exactly. Yeah. My, my personal opinion, uh, yeah. I think that the whole city should open up and that uh, if you don't want to go out, you don't go out. That's my opinion. Yeah, no, okay. And it would mm -hmm. flatten the curve, not eliminate the disease. You know, we still have HIV and people are still being intimate. There are inherent risks with living a life. And in order for this city to survive, and I have a friend who just quit uh, over with MGM because uh, had mentioned to me, how are we going to, you know, have a concert and only sell a quarter of the seats? How are we going to have a hockey game and only sell a quarter of the seats with social distancing? These things are impossible. They're risky. No, you're living. right. And either you risk it and you go live a life or you stay in your home for the rest of your life. But it's not cure the disease. It's flatten the curve. I think we have the ability. And you don't get herd immunity unless you get the disease. Certain people have to get the exactly. disease. Exactly. What do you think the actual mortality rate is based on, based on what you know about antibodies? We've seen... You know, it's been interesting. We've seen probably 10 or 12 different studies done across not just the United States, but also different countries that have come up with anywhere from a 0.15 to a 0.40. But then last week you had specific uh, media outlets that were that were saying, and actually I think I think Chuck Schumer actually said too, that these antibody tests aren't really reliable. You know, based on the fact that you're, you're saying that they are reliable, you actually had one. It showed that you had the yeah. virus and you're, and you're immune to it. What do you think the actual mortality rate is of this virus? Well, I, I, I really don't know, uh, based on what I've read and what I've seen, and there's so much information out there. I really think that if you're obese, if you're older, uh, if you have a comorbid condition, asthma, uh, you know, lung disease, if you have an autoimmune disorder, you may be at increased risk for getting the virus and not mounting as good of an immune response. No question. Um, well, I, doctor, let me, let, let me, I just wanted to say this. Uh, we're very happy that you and your family are doing well. We're happy that you've you know, recovered from the coronavirus. Obviously, that's the most important thing. I'm sure it was a very uh, dangerous time, or scary, I should say, time for you. We're glad you're back working again. And, uh, you know, I appreciate the fact that you shared your story. And this, these are scary times that we're living in, but I appreciate your expertise. And I find it fascinating. There's not many people in the world that have gotten a chance to learn from Dr. Fauci. So uh, I appreciate that about you as well. That's very unique, and I appreciate your candor with that. And uh, thank you so much for taking some time to join us, Doctor. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, well, well, thank you, and I really appreciate your guys, you know, discussing this. And like I said, my brother lives actually in London, England, and there was a lot of debate there about how they're going to go about doing the coronavirus. And you know, at first they wanted everybody to get it, and then they didn't want anybody to get it. And you know, the prime minister there got it. Uh, I, you know, we're all learning as we go. Sure. No, I think that's the important thing. There's a lot of stuff we still don't know, and I, you know, my side has always been it's better to be on the side of caution. When there, again, there are so many unanswered questions. Uh, Dr. Greenberg, really do appreciate your time again, and uh, please be safe and best to you and your family. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Take care. Right. Yeah, thanks a lot, Doc. Thanks. Uh, interesting. I mean, he, he said that Dr. Fauci's brilliant. Uh, he mm -hmm. never heard him talk about politics. Uh, nothing but positive things to say about Dr. Fauci. You know what? The majority of people uh, have had that same sentiment.